Welcome to the first in a series of informative videos about peer-to-peer -peer file sharing and copyright infringement. My name is Dar Delaney, I'm Head of Technical Services here at net for technologies So firstly, peer-to-peer -peer definition. We're going to focus here on these two net diagrams at the bottom. Now in the past we were used to this type of setup where we have clients connecting to a central resource here which is server and clients are sharing files most of which are stored on the server. However, in a peer-to-peer -peer network, there is no central location. Instead, files are shared amongst clients. And interestingly, with peer-to-peer, -peer, the files, pieces of the file are shared amongst clients. Now, the whole legal basis about peer-to-peer -peer and file sharing goes right back now, almost two, two decades, goes right back to a Betamax decision here when VCR video cassette recorders first came out. Moved on into a Grokster decision which focused more on software. It was, wasn't seen as an illegal tool, even though it could be used to download copyrighted material. In 2001, the Napster case came up. Now, this was a server-based system, and that was shut down. And more recent, we've had the Pirate Bay case. And in this case here, Pirate Bay, the prosecutor claimed that Pirate Bay existed to administer host and develop the site, and thereby facilitated other people's breach of copyright law. Now at the bottom here, I've got a couple of links. You might want to check them out there, which gives more information around some of the interesting legal cases associated with media sharing. Something you might have come across, but this is a notification here where somebody has been caught downloading um, illegal or copyrighted material from the internet. And the interesting piece here is the section at the bottom, which will show you when it was detected, IP address of your network, um, and the media file involved. In this case here, it was a um, some sort of a, a video. Now, what our customer is experiencing at the moment is an increase in these DMCA notices. This is Digital Millennium Copyright Act. So we are seeing an increase in these letters being sent out and people are being asked to investigate where some software is being, or music or media has been downloaded. Now, BitTorrent is the most popular peer-to-peer -peer protocol out there. And it's evident everywhere, especially in, in college campus networks. And it accounts for a large volume of traffic on internet links. Now, my little, little image here, it's become really easy to download. And we're going to take a look at that now in, in just a minute. So it's really easy to download um, material via peer-to-peer -peer networks. And Pirate Bay court cases increase the awareness of peer-to-peer -peer and BitTorrent. So... If it's just traffic, where's the difficulty here in basically monitoring and finding out what's happening? Well, there's no known well service to monitor. So we looked earlier on, it's, it's clients connected to clients. So there isn't a particular set of servers with, that we can monitor here. There's no known what ports, well known ports to monitor. If we wanted to monitor, let's say, web traffic, we could focus on port 80. But with BitTorrent, especially ports are negotiated by peers, it's completely random, it's just random connections. Now, intrusion detection signatures can detect peer startup. So you, you can detect the presence of BitTorrent clients on the network, but you don't yield enough information whether it's illegal material or whether somebody might be just downloading a, a, an operating system or something. And, or that is, it's very good, actually, for that. So you gotta you need to follow the protocol. You've got to understand the protocol. You've got to do some decoding. And that's something we're going to look at as to how the Land Guardian can help in this area. And because BitTorrent is the most popular protocol out there, we're going to take a look at that. So let me give me a quick demonstration first of how easy it is to get access to material on the internet via BitTorrent. In this very quick example, I'm going to show you how you can use the BitTorrent applications to download software from the internet. So it's really quick and easy to, to do this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this uh, Torrent search site. Now I'm going to use the infamous Pirate Bay, but there are loads of others out there, and in fact, you can also use Google to search. I'm going to do a search here for Ubuntu uh, operating system. You can choose all. I'm just going to look for application here. I'm going to do a search. I am to provide a little sort column here. I want to sort by seeds. So I picked the one here with plenty of seeds. Little download option here. So this is an important piece here. So when downloading a file here, Ubuntu desktop um, version and then .torrent. And this is something we're going to come to earlier, later on in the video. I'm going to open it up here with my default um, BitTorrent application. And then it asks me where do I want to store it. So I'm going to, that's fine, I'm going to choose that directory. 
600, 700 megabytes. I click OK. And my download has now started. So those of you out there who use this will be very familiar with it here. At the moment, I have 0% downloaded. It's starting to make connections here. The down speed is starting to increase. I'm making connections here to lots of different computer users out there on the internet that have this file available for sharing. And it's estimating here that I'm going to have this in a couple of hours. But this will, this will really drop down uh, quite quickly. I'll probably have this in the space of about 30 minutes. Download speed is increasing all the time. Just drop there, but it will increase. Uh, probably will get this at around 300 kilobits per second. So that's how easy it is to download software, but you can download anything, music, movies, anything you want via BitTorrent. So this is the protocol we're going to take a closer look at as to actually what happens when you enable this on your network and type connections and how you can detect it on your network. Before we move on and take a look at detecting BitTorrent traffic on, on a computer network, First, I want to go through what is, actually, what is in these torrent files. These torrent files are, as you can see from the demo, required to kick off the BitTorrent client so that the, the download can happen. So we've got here, it's got two columns. I'm going to show you five interesting things that are contained within the torrent file. And here, we can actually see the content from a torrent file. So firstly, the torrent file will describe some sort of media available. In this case here, it happens to be an operating system release. Also contained in here is a tracker. Now, a tracker is something like Pirate Bay. In this case here, it's actually from FreeBSD. So this is where a client will connect to to find out who has got this piece of who has got this file available. I want to download it, so I need to know who else has this available. So a tracker will know who out there has this particular file. And then peers peer or Peers will share pieces of the file. So this, what we have here is a, um, it's basically a hash representation of the file. So it's just a, a random number, sort of series of digits, numbers and characters. Now when we take a look at the peer-to-peer -peer protocol later on, this is how the file is referenced when, when files are exchanged on the internet. So then just how the sharing happens. Firstly, we obtain the torrent file. We saw that earlier on, download from a HTTP site. The client reads that torrent file and generates an, an info hash. So it's the SHA1 hash of the torrent file. That's sent out to the tracker, and we get a list of peers as to who has this file available for download. We connect to the peers. My client connects to the peers. We saw that earlier on. My client started to make lots of connections. So it was ha doing handshakes with these clients out there. Now we agree ports, and these are random port numbers. And then we start exchanging data, and we could see in my Client area later on as well, where I started to, I, when I closed it down, I had about 136 kilobytes of data per second was coming in. That would ramp up in my case on my uh, DSL connection here, probably around 300, 350 kilobits per second inbound traffic. And I was also share information back out again. Okay, well, that's the first of our videos. It's just a, really an introduction to the whole peer to peer um, environment and also the focus on BitTorrent. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at now the detecting the BitTorrent traffic on your network. In fact, detecting peer-to-peer -peer applications on your network and also then building some nice reports and even a dashboard to monitor this activity.